Today, we're going to start improving your aim. What's up? It's the champ with Strider's Angels Esports, and today begins my series on how to improve your aim. This YouTube series is targeting PC FPS players who struggled seeing improvements in their mouse control and aim. And this is going to be a multi-part series which focuses on a variety of different topics such as gear, ergonomics, sensitivity settings, and different training routines that can help to improve your aim. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a perfect gamer myself and I struggle through some potato aim every now and then. And I'm hoping some of the steps I've taken to help improve my aim will help out all of you potatoes improve your aim. Today's video focuses on gaming gear and this is not a tier list or a product recommendation list. I'm gonna talk just about the types of gear you want in your ideal setup to give you a competitive advantage and to kind of max out your performance. Let's start with the most important piece of gear your mouse. If you've been using the Dell Special, which is what I like to call that kind of, that mouse that came with the PC that your parents bought you a decade ago, um, it's probably time to upgrade to a, a mouse with a modern sensor. Now good for you, gaming mice have become really, really good over the last few years and there are many like quality affordable options to choose from. And uh, when you're looking for a gaming mouse, the most important things are the sensor and comfort. Now, comfort is of course subjective and it depends on your hand size. While a good sensor is just straight up a good sensor and can go in virtually any mouse. Um, the reason you want a good sensor is it's gonna be more consistent, smooth, and accurate than a poor sensor. And you want your, your mouse sensor to be predictable, meaning you know where the cursor is gonna go uh, while you're moving your arm or your wrist around. Now the market for gaming mice has become so competitive that virtually all mice from the top brands have really high quality sensors. And improvements at the top of the line, deluxe mice, uh, are not that noticeable to some of the slightly older gaming mice. For example, I saw the classic Razer Death Adder for $29.99 on Black Friday, and this mouse is more than good enough to be competitive with at even the top, top levels of gaming. And uh, it's going to be very hard to tell the difference between the sensor in the, in the Death Adder and the 2019 Viper Ultimate that I'm currently using unless you're like a top tier like Shroud or someone. You also see a lot of talk about DPI when gaming mice are being marketed and this leads a lot of players to play on crazy sensitivity levels that are, are just way too, way too high to be precise. And I consider the normal range for a high level player to be somewhere like between 400 to 800 DPI. So if you're much above this, you're probably crippling your aim by making it too sensitive. Now, if you take a look at some of the pro settings, uh, I'll put a link in the description and look at the sensitivities that they play on both in game and with their DPI and compare it to your own. If your numbers are significantly higher than theirs, it's probably time to begin slowly working your way down in small DPI increments until you get into that kind of ideal 800 to 400 zone. One last thing to do to make sure your sensitivity is at a good level since you have to take into account in-game and DPI is uh, take a look at how many centimeters it takes yourself to turn a full 360 degrees. Put your rulers away guys, I'm just playing. Okay, I'm just playing. All right, I put a converter in the description. Uh, put your in-game sensitivity into that along with your DPI, hit enter and calculate your score. I consider between like 20 to 40 centimeters per 360 playable with 25 to 35 being kind of uh, the sweet spot for a well-rounded aim. And uh, just while you're looking at your mouse, also do yourself a favor and go into your PC settings and make sure mouse acceleration is clicked off because it's shocking how many people forget to do that, especially if they haven't been using a name brand uh, mouse that comes with a default turned off. 
Now, once you have your mouse and sensitivity settings up and running, it's time to move on to the uh, next most important and often overlooked piece of gaming gear, which is your mouse pad. And I'm not going to talk about cloth versus hard surface. I think that's very much uh, down to personal preference. I mean, personally, I prefer a, a fine cloth textured pad, but uh, we're going to talk about mouse pad size. And uh, yes, the mouse pad size matters. Sorry, guys. Uh, if you're using a 12 inch mouse pad, um, it's not going to allow you to play at DPI settings that are most conducive to having consistently good aim. So, uh, yeah, the mouse pad is going to be too small. Um, the reason for this is you don't have enough room to drag your mouse without consistently having to like pick up your arm and reset it or just straight up go off the mouse pad onto your desk. I consider those 24 inch mouse pads to be kind of the minimum necessary to play competitively on like an appropriate sensitivity setting. However, I think you really owe it to yourself to uh, check out one of those extended, like massively huge mouse mats. I mean, I use the 36 inch HyperX Fury and uh, this thing's huge, it's glorious, and I don't have to worry about really dragging my, my mouse off of the, the mouse pad or uh, running out of space. And uh, I think if you, Invest the 20 or $30 in getting the biggest mouse pad that your desk will fit. It will be well worth the peace of mind of knowing that you're going to have enough space to play at a proper sensitivity setting and not have to worry about resetting your arm every, every two seconds. The last piece of equipment I want to talk about, it's probably the least important when it comes to improving your aim, but uh, it's still a topic I want to touch on now because I'm going to talk about it again in my next video when I talk about setting up your gaming station. And that's going to be your keyboard. And again, we're not going to talk about brands or switches, but we're going to talk about keyboard size. And uh, a lot of mechanical keyboards are marketed as like these big RGB behemoths with volume controls, USB ports, and extra macro buttons, and all these bells and whistles, which lead to a pretty damn big keyboard, right? Now, traditionally, I always use these large keyboards, and uh, I noticed I never actually used any of these additional features. And when my like huge Patriot Viper broke, I decided to go with a 10 keyless keyboard, which eliminates the number pad and decreases the size of the keyboard. And this allowed me to clear up even more space in my uh, on my mouse mat, so I could drag my arm even further unimpeded. Um, and I've seen actually the market for these smaller keyboards growing over the last year or so. And you actually even see now 60% keyboards like the one by Ducky One, which I really want to try out, but like have no need to actually buy since my keyboard still works right now. I hope this video was helpful covering kind of the basic gear you should be looking at to improve your game performance. And uh, if it was, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and joining me in my next video where we're going to cover how to optimally set up both your body and your gaming station so that you can kind of be at peak performance. All right, champ out.